same violence as another kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Parents and caregivers of Disney Magnet School students began rushing to the campus off Lakeshore, just south of Montrose, after word went out saying a gun went off in the school. This in the backpack of a student, according to police. It's shocking for one, for a little kid to have a gun, something that it should be hard for an adult to have, but at a school. Chicago police say the incident happened just before 10 this morning. Their investigation revealing that the weapon accidentally discharged in the backpack while inside a classroom with a bullet striking the ground and ricocheting, resulting in a classmate being grazed in the abdomen. Wow. So we got kids bringing straps to school and accidentally discharging that firearm. I mean, as a parent, I would be scared too. It's crazy, man. That student was taken to Lurie Children's Hospital in good condition. It's not normal for up here, not up all the way up here. In an email to parents, the school principal only said no serious injuries had occurred. My son is seven too, so it's like, it's very worse. How did a kid get a, a gun in his backpack? School stayed in session. For parents intent on getting their kids out, unmistakable anxiety. It's like a village, parents, school, adults, I would take a village to help these young kids nowadays, because it's different growing up now in Chicago. Jennifer Urabi's daughter texted her when she found out what was going on. Someone brought a gun, all I heard is there was a gun and I came flying here. I wasn't gonna text her, because if she had to hide, I didn't want her doing that. So I said, stop texting me, and I came here. We're, we're freaking out, here. yeah, we're freaking out right now. And for this young father, it is a day he won't soon forget. I don't know, the thing about gun, uh, in the, in yesterday, the weekend, Gun shootings going all the country. It's like, this is crazy. And as school lets out around here, the hugs are maybe held a little bit longer. And judging by the expressions on many parents' faces, the promise that tomorrow will be better is a real challenge around the dinner table tonight and in the days ahead. In Chicago, Ravi Bajwal, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Also today, a student brings a gun to a grade school and it goes off. Let's begin there with the story we first broke this morning. CBS 2, Stephen Graves outside Disney Magnet School Force. And Stephen, one student there was hurt. Right, Jim Marie. Thankfully, that child is expected to be okay. The shot fired while it is believed to be an accident. You can imagine just the terror and horror among parents, students, and staff here. Let's take you to some video exclusively shot by CBS2. We were the first to arrive here at Disney Magnet. You can see a child sitting, sitting in an ambulance that was later led off to the hospital. We know a second grader just seven years old was hit. Police say a bullet grazed them in the abdomen when a classmate dropped their book bag and the gun inside of it went off. This Wow, man. This stuff is crazy, y'all. Happened around 9.50 in the morning. Parents got an email from the school around 11.30. Many rushing to pick up their small kids, relieved they were safe. A lot of them having questions as to how that child even got a gun to begin with. Police scanner traffic gives us some clues into that. Second grade student brought a gun to school in his backpack. The gun went off inside. They have the gun. The student said his mother's boyfriend put the gun in the bag. Wow. The mother's boyfriend put the gun in the bag. For one, sisters, come get your kids. And for two, who is the baby daddy? Who are y'all bringing in y'all kids' lives that is putting straps in your kids' backpacks, man? I'm telling you, these sisters love hood dudes to the death of them. This is really isn't on the school per se because it was in the kid's backpack. It's more so on the parent. And I like what she said, but it's always on the parent.
always. Chicago Public Schools says Disney Magnet is working with police to investigate this. Now, while, again, this is believed to be accidental, a lot of students undoubtedly shaken up by this. So they're saying they're working with students here to provide any services that are needed. We are asking if there's going to be any updated security that's going to be here tomorrow. For anyone who's uneasy, we have yet to hear back on that, but we'll be sure to keep you updated. Live here in Buena Park, Stephen Graves, CBS 2 lead organizations. I spoke with two black fathers who lead organizations trying to help the youth. So they're not only just concerned with protecting their kids, they're also looking out for all young people in their community. They had a really interesting perspective about what happened downtown over the weekend and the solution. Levante Stewart Sr. and Joseph Williams are both fathers to their own children and father figures for those who need one. They believe the city should rely more on people like them to tackle the issue of young people coming down. Y'all see what's going on. Sisters twerking on top of people's cars. The police just watching helpless. They can't do anything. The ratchetness, the debauchery. These super gremlins are on demon time. Downtown and causing trouble. Instead of trying to police our way out of this, let's involve the community and organizations. You gotta see they now uh see now they lost me. Involve the community and organizations. Yeah, involve the community and, and give these people up who doing wrong. That's all you gotta that's all the involvement you need. We need witnesses and we need people who are willing to give anonymous tips. That's pretty much all you need. Obviously, take care of your kids and make sure your kids ain't the ones who's getting told on. But that's about it. If everybody just did that, see some, say some, and make sure your kids is good, we would be in a lot better position. But all they doing is, oh, we need a program and we need funding for this program. I have folks at the table who are working with these children every single day. Williams heads Mr. Dad's Father's Club and Stewart leads Lost Boys, Inc. Both of their groups focus on helping kids stay active and on the right path. A lot of those youth that we see downtown, you might have a few. They may be agitators and there may be those who are looking to start some trouble. A few? A few? Did you see that clip? Did you did he see the video that I saw and he's saying, oh, it's only a few people? Um <laughs> I'm sorry, bro, but I'm going to have to go back and show you. That ain't a few. That's everybody. That's everybody over there. This ain't a few, bro. This is everybody. Look, you got this girl twerking. You got this girl twerking up here. You got everybody filming. You got everybody involved. You got them slapping her booty. Oh, it's only a few people. It's only a few people, right? Everybody's slapping her ass. And these are presumed to be minors. Okay? But it's only a few. And there may be those who are looking to start some trouble. Williams says some of the teens are trying to escape the dangers in their own neighborhoods. Two years ago, when children started to go downtown, the first thing I heard a lot of them say was that we're coming downtown because we can't go in our communities and safely be able to play and enjoy ourselves. Um, stay there. <laughs> Cause y'all coming downtown and bringing that? Mm, come on, man. Stewart says some parents are struggling to keep track of their kids because they have a lot on their plate. They're trying to work two jobs, be the bread renter, take care of home. You know, it, it cuts into the time that you're able to spend with your child. That's why they believe it's going to take a village to make sure what happened last weekend downtown doesn't happen again. We have to start offering programs where our children can have a- Told you. Programs on top of programs on top of programs. Outlet. They can talk about their feelings. They can get that social emotional piece that they need. And guess who they want to pay for it? You guessed it. You. Which they say will lead to young people. Push shiesty mask, push shiesty mask, push shiesty mask. Making better choices. In Inglewood, Will Jones, ABC7 Eyewitness News. I'm here on the corner of MLK and Medgar Evers. 
and it's a very tranquil scene compared to just a couple hours ago where a drive-by shooting just took place. Uh, uh, excuse me, I I'm getting live updates as we speak. I've just been updated to the amount of casualties from this drive-by shooting, and I'm getting reports that two people were actually declared deceased and 27 others were shot and injured, but are in stable condition. And although we must pray for the families of the fallen, we must also praise God for the aim of the super gremlin. If you want to know more about the victims of this crime, make sure you add BGZM News 17 on Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash Black Gen Z Mindset. Also, don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and comment on the video to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. For more hard-hitting news coverage from the Communita, by the Communita, I'm Jim Quavius Jackson, here live, reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. And cut. All right, dogs. Let's get the out of here before these niggas come Whoa. back. Whoa. Whoa. Yo. Whoa. Ain't that that nigga Jim Nah, Quavius? nah, that ain't me, that ain't me. Hey, he just went live that ain't with that me. funky ass yeah, song that's on. that nigga. That's not me. Hey, hey get hey, that nigga. Jim Quavius hey, Jackson, here live, man. reporting from Atlanta, Georgia. Pray for me. Shondell Hol Cheryl Shondell Holiday's mother says she told her son she called not to go downtown. Now tonight, the 17-year-old who prosecutors say fired this single fatal shot at Holiday is being held in jail, charged as an adult for the murder in this park. Ask his family, and Shondell Holiday was an electronics whiz. He's a genius. He could fix anything. And that teenage genius had goals and dreams. Not long ago, his mother says she found a handwritten list. Ten goals he wants to accomplish, and he wants to live since he's 21. Saturday night, Shondell Holiday was murdered, shot and killed in a crowd of kids his age at Millennium Park. Oh, so it's only a few, right? It's only a few, right? All of these folks at Millennium Park by the bean. And it's only a few. He was 16 years old. I told him not to go. I said, you're not going downtown. And I, and I got a call. Shondell was shot downtown. Mm. Prosecutors say it was Marion Richardson who pulled the trigger, firing the fatal shot. Another male approached the defendant at the same time and appeared to punch at the defendant's head. Defendant Richardson then took out a handgun and shot the victim once in the chest. This grainy screen grab shows moments before the fatal shot. Prosecutors told the judge the two teenagers exchanged words and then Holiday, they say, jumped on Richardson's back. My son traumatized because he actually saw his cousin take his last breath. Now Mayor Lightfoot is cracking down, implementing a 10 p.m. weekend curfew and a ban on unaccompanied minors in Millennium Park after 6 p.m. Thursday through Sundays. The city's hoping it saves another young life. Mayor Lightfoot has said this curfew will be enforced, but there are plenty of people asking exactly how this curfew is going to be enforced. The mayor has also said, I know, <laughs> unarmed violence interrupters or the dads after dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sheesh. She hopes teens will just comply with this citywide and Millennium Park curfew on their own. The chaos at the Bean Saturday night had police outmanned and scrambling. Police brass ordering officers to begin rounding people up. It's a mass arrest situation. If they're breaking the law, make the arrest. That did not happen due to a lack of police manpower, but in response to an altercation that led to the shooting death of 16-year-old Shondell Holiday, Mayor Lightfoot has ordered that minors without an adult will not be allowed in Millennium Park after 6 p.m. from Thursday through Sunday. Millennium Park has become a gathering place, but also a flashpoint. We can't allow any public space to be turned into a place of chaos and violence. 
This morning, during a groundbreaking for a new athletic field at Farragut Career Academy, Mayor Lightfoot stressing that simply arresting young people during large gatherings doesn't work. That's not our goal. Our goal is to make sure that we create public spaces like this one where children and families can enjoy themselves in safety and peace. Alderman Brian Hopkins concerned about the strain mass gatherings put on police delaying 911 responses in other neighborhoods. There were up to three hours of a, of a, a backlog on Saturday night. Uh, and some of these calls were serious calls, batteries and fights in progress, burglar alarms going off. Police rethinking strategies to hopefully Push the mask, I'm telling you guys. Tur violence that large gatherings might spark. We have learned lessons, we do after actions after. These women, bro, I mean, I guess they're not women, these teenage girls twerking on a car, like, bro, come on. Is this, is this is where we're at with it, sisters? This is where we at with it, seriously. Lessons we do after actions after each one of these, and we'll continue to improve as the summer goes on, and uh, you know, eventually we'll get this right. Mayor, Light it's gonna be a cold summer. Lightfoot once again stressing that young people are welcome in any public space, but she vowed that those who break the law will face consequences. Her new order for Millennium Park will be put to the test starting Thursday night at City Hall. Craig Wall, ABC7 Eyewitness News.